Hi, in this video, I'll talk about uh, the SAS procedure PROC Autorec. PROC Autorec is used to perform uh, regression when you have time series data. Well, we might have uh, come across the, uh, the univariate time series uh, analysis, but what if we have a, a you know, causal inference wherein we have a dependent and independent variable but at the same time we have time series data well that's an interesting question and how do we really uh, handle that kind of a data or model that kind of data we can do that using prop auto regression wherein we'll have a combination of feature for regression as well as time series okay so uh, to illustrate uh, this i'll use uh, a data set uh, it's a dummy data i'm just creating uh, it uh, for this purpose so uh, just to talk about why uh, PROC reg it cannot be used uh, for uh, you know uh, performing regression with time series data uh, why can't we use that well we cannot use PROC reg uh, because uh, the assumption uh, in regression is that the uh, errors should not be correlated among themselves right but with time series data we often find that the errors um, are uh, related to each other okay they are very correlated so with uh, correlate, correlated errors we cannot perform the ordinary least square so that is an assumption so if, if you perform that there will be a, a biasness in the uh, in the standard error and uh, you cannot uh, explain the estimates properly uh, in the sense that uh, it's going to be biased hence uh, we need to uh, use some other technique uh, for that uh, which is known as uh, auto regressive technique proc auto reg is uh, the sas proc that can be used for this well uh, for this purpose uh, i have cre created this data set dat uh, let me show you the data set how it looks i have got uh, uh, these many variables so there are two variables which are of uh, importance to us time and y i want to know how y is uh, uh, you know y depends on time so y is my dependent variable and time is my independent variable remember that uh, time is time period from 1 to 36 so i'm hoping that the error terms for the each time period are correlated among themselves so I cannot use the uh, the ordinary regression. Let me first uh, show you the plot. When you have a regression plot, when you perform the normal regression without taking into consideration uh, the 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 presence of uh, time series data, if you simply perform the OLS regression, what we, what is going to happen? Let me show you uh, how it looks. Well. So you can see the regression line um, you can see that it's a bit unusual it might not have come across such a regression look at this the error terms after this regression line uh, is above the regression line for a long period of time okay if you see here for thrice it is uh, you know uh, in the upper side of the regression line and uh, uh, thrice in the downside but the uh, interesting thing is that if there is uh, it happens twice almost twice that uh, for a uh, significant period of time it is either uh, in the upper side of the regression line and for a significant period of time it is the lower side of the regression line well that shows that the error terms are correlated among themselves we can of course use uh, the uh, uh, time series plots to know that uh, how the errors are correlated uh, if I have gone through my lectures on time series you might have come across the ACF autocorrelation function and the PACF partial autocorrelation function to know what is the order of the time series correlations okay so uh, I have done that so I will not be covering that uh, here so it, the order of time series correlation in this case is 2 that means uh, it's a second order uh, co uh, autocorrelation so um, I'll, I'll now introduce to you uh, how to handle this problem and how to ensure that your uh, regression outputs are good enough to interpret and uh, the standard errors are not biased. Proc auto data and then data set name. 
model y equal to time. So the syntax remains pretty much the same. Just that you need to mention what is the method that you are going to use. Okay. There are several methods. I prefer uh, maximum likelihood. So uh, when you run this, you will get the uh, output from the proc uh, auto rate. Um, you will have uh, the AIC, uh, the SIC, the Durbin Watson. Yeah, Durbin Watson is the statistic for the time series, uh, you know, the autocorrelations. And then the uh, regression R square, that means the R square that uh, we uh, see in proc rate. So the output is similar, couple of things are missing and you will have some additional statistics like Durbin Watson in this case. And the parameter estimates, you have uh, the estimates, standard error, corresponding t-values and p-values. Pretty much same to what we get in uh, proc reg. And now this standard error is unbiased. So, uh, you know, you can really experiment by using proc reg with the same data and check how the standard error is different. I'm sure you will see uh, a different standard error with the same data. So that's about uh, proc auto reg. Just to summarize, it's a, a SAS proc which can be used to perform regression when you have, uh, you know, data set uh, for different time periods and you expect the uh, error terms, uh, the error to be correlated across the years. Okay. And sometimes if you have, you know, uh, heteroscedastic data also, uh, we can also use for, you uh, use proc auto reg. Um, yeah, one more thing I'm missing. Oh, well, it's it's a second order auto uh, auto correlation happening here, right? So I can use the n lag option. N lag option here just to uh, tell the procedure that uh, the auto correlation is second order in nature. Okay, so that's about proc order. Thanks.